Okay, welcome back. Hope you didn't miss me too much. So, different game now. Endeavor, the category is called Any Percent Bad Ending. This is a really awesome retro pixel game. The, developer, the author's name is Zillix. I'll talk about, about him a bit more in a minute. But, so this for this particular category, timing starts when I enter for the first time and will end when I return to the... To the and when I return to the t title screen after collecting a treasure that's important to the game. What? Oh yeah, so it's officially in. That last run was world record for both the category it's actually supposed to belong to, no mage skip, and for any percent. So shout outs to me. Now I was going to think there was a chance I would also world record in this this, but that's now much lower. I PB'd just last night, so very tiny chance, but not very likely. It would take some pretty impressive execution. So, we good to start? Okay, so let's just jump right into this. Timing starts in three, two, one, go. So, just to explain the text I'm masking through here, we are a dwarf, and our father has unfortunately just passed away. And he's told us that many cent many centuries ago, our ancestors hid a treasure in a place that no one could reach. And now it's our turn to go and find that. So we're going to do that. Now there's two main things that we're going to be collecting during this run. Sorry, I keep forgetting about the mess. One of, the, one of them is gems, and the other is fruits called endurance fruits. They're orange. And we're actually going to ignore one of them coming up. So normally, we'd, we're supposed... Okay, I'm flubbing a bit here. Normally, we're supposed to go to the area off to the left and collect one, but instead, we're going to ignore that. We're not supposed to be up here. That is a strat I discovered myself. The only thing I've contributed to speedrunning besides running myself, I call it the juiceless jumper juke because reasons. Now, there's two main things we're going to be doing to ignore this game a lot. One of them is called menu warping. warming. Menu warping. It's exactly what I just did. We can hit Q to return to the menu, and then we can hit X to re-enter. And it'll always take us back to that same place at the bottom of the cliff there. And we're going to use it to skip a lot of walking. Now, if you notice what we landed by, it's that was a temple. And in that temple is a deity named Malor. And he's offered to help us get back, back home if we can collect 10 gems for him. So we're going to do that. One of them is right here. And that's Malor talking right now. So we're going to help, help him collect the gems because we're a really nice person. And it's what we're going to do. Now... I did not realize how low my endurance was. So the main mechanic of this game is that endurance bar at the top, and it's what we increase by collecting the endurance fruits. And most of this game with the routing is making sure I have enough endurance to get around to various places. So to talk a bit about Zillix, really awesome developer, makes all sorts of retro pixel games like this. This one was actually partially inspired by a one he did before this called Summit. Used the same character and a lot of the same background design, as well as the mechanic of the endurance and a lot of the climbing mechanics. He Most of the stuff he makes is for what's called Let Him Dare, this really awesome gaming challenge that basically says, hey, go make a game in such and such a time and make it really awesome. And sometimes they do themes and sometimes they don't, but overall it's really cool. Now the great thing about Malor is every time we return to him, he's going to tell us where another gem is. Now, fortunately, we don't need this because we're speedrunning. Now, in that area where I grabbed the first gem, you may have noticed I also grabbed boots. We need these to get the next gem, because ordinarily there would be some very high winds blowing around, and it would make it very difficult to climb this area. But with the boots, it's guaranteed that we're able to get through. Now, I was trying to, a while to find a way to skip having to collect the boots, but unfortunately, the wind programming is simply way too strong. Hang on, I probably should wait here. So there's a gem at the very top of this mountain, and then we're going to menu warp, and we're going to head off to the right. Now, there's ten gems in total, and we've gotten three of them so far. There's a couple other things you can also collect in this game. The only one we actually need for the speed for this particular category is a parachute, and we'll get that a bit later. Now, I will say some of what I'm going to be doing in a moment is going to look extremely marathon unsafe, but there's some very easy backups if I fail it. So... Six very quick jumps to try and avoid running out of stamina, and we get up here much faster than I would ordinarily. So we're going to climb up to the top of this area, and we're going to grab a pair of flippers, and then we're going to dive down into the ocean at the bottom. Now, to, I should probably explain a little bit of how the endurance bar works. So as long as we're holding on to something like I am with these vines, or when we're underwater swimming, that endurance bar is slowly depleting. 
and when it runs out, either we fall to the ground if we're climbing, or we just float back up to the surface if we're swimming. Or, if you're speed running, once you're done with whatever you're doing when you're swimming, you can swim fully menu warp. Now, there's another mechanic we're going to be using in a moment, and that's called gem warp. So, we can use any of these gems, and we can warp to the location where we collected it. And we're just going to go back to this one, and we save ourselves a bunch more walking or swimming up from the surf from the bottom of the ocean. Now, there's two ways to do this next area. There's a gem on top of the pillars here, and there's one down here in a maze. Now, one of the other categories will actually climb up the pillars and grab the gem there, drop down to here, and then collect the gem here before menu warping and then gem warping to the one at the top. But that is immensely difficult and way beyond my skill level right now. So we're just going to drop down here, collect the, the gem and the parachute I mentioned earlier, use the same gem we used to warp already, and then we're going to climb the pillars. Now there's another, hang on, let's see, what did I need to mention yet? Yeah, okay, I've actually rerouted the pillar climb a couple times recently, and this is the new fastest way I've found to do it. Now, if you want to see something cool, I'd encourage you to look up the map for this game and look at how the pillars look when you see them all at once, because it's actually really funny. But I don't want to spoil that for anyone who would rather find it out for themselves. Now, whoop, 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 okay. Thankfully, I didn't fall as far as I sh should have. I That would have been really bad. I am choking this so hard. Okay, here we go. Almost to the top now. There we go. Okay, so we're going to end up getting to an area that I don't think we're supposed the developer intended us to be able to, because this parachute is really broken. So there's going to be an area off to our right, and normally we'd have to go down into the ocean, come out in a different location, and collect a pair of gloves that will help us with climbing. But instead, we're just going to use the parachute. We're just going to use the parachute and float over here. Now, there's an item up there called the lightning, and every other category gets it. But this we don't because we don't actually need it. We're going to drop down here, grab that fruit for later, and now we're going to go inside a volcano. And this actually has one of my favorite parts of the game. So if you haven't noticed already, every time we collect a gem, Malor will say something. And in this particular case, there's two gems that are very close to each other. And I'm going to try and collect both of them fast enough that the text for one will still be up when I collect the other. And there we go. And we get to see some nonsense on the screen. Now we're almost done. We've got one more gem to collect over here in this forest area. And I'm going to take the time to explain something so I can talk about other things later. So if you haven't figured it out already, between the fact this category is called Bad Ending and what Malor has been saying, Malor is evil. And these gems are basically keeping him confined to the temple he's in to keep him from basically taking over the world. So this would normally all be explained when we collect a sword, that, which is the treasure that our ancestor hid all those years ago. And once we collect it, Malor will basically take over the world and we'll all be very sad. But, okay, I might be in trouble here. Thank God. I would have been very bad if I'd fallen. But, yeah, so we are completely doing the wrong thing here by collecting the gems, and... That's the last one, so we're going to climb up back home. Now this beam of light, along with the parachute, has some really weird properties. So I'm opening the parachute because, for whatever reason, I haven't figured it out yet, but it makes me go slightly faster. And then once I get back up to the top, I'm going to keep it open once I leave the beam. And this actually makes a bit more sense. It will actually help me proceed... Pr pr what's the word? Ret retain my vertical speed, upward vertical speed for a bit, just because... For whatever reason, the programmers decided to not immediately reduce you to zero speed once you open it, which is nice. So let's see if I can get all the way over that cliff I climbed earlier. Hup. And okay, no, not quite. But anyway, we're almost done here. The sword's back near where we started, and you'll notice all of the dwarves seem to be kind of mad at us. That's because they know about Malor, and they somehow know that we released him. For whatever reason, they didn't think it was a good idea to tell us about him, so you have to be a bit mad at them for that. Here's that sword I mentioned. Going to skip all the text explaining what I explained already. And now Malor is coming up here to destroy us. So we've completely screwed up, and to punish myself, I'm going to try and throw myself off the cliff. And I should have just... Okay, now it's unlikely I'm going to make it because I screwed that up. But we're going to get through Malor turning the world dark, and then we're going to have four scenes of me berating myself, and timing is almost done for time. Okay, unfortunately one overestimate. That's not too bad, though. I'm very proud of that. And that was Endeavor. Thank you.
So we've got one more game, hopefully one that more of you will be familiar with, Pop Tropica. And I'm going to be doing Game Show Island as soon as we finish doing a very quick transition, I hope.